God is good. All the time. Would you please rise as we begin? Let's sing together, How Great Thou Art. Let's do something a little bit different for 1030. Let's join together in, in prayer. Almighty and amazing God, 
By your word, you made all things and blessed them. You call us to care for and tend what you have made and to rest in your presence. Empower us by your spirit that we may enjoy your goodness. Amen. So now living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of Luther's explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Next slide. There you go. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, and has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with silver and gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I might be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns for all eternity. This is most certainly true. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to your neighbor and share with them a sign of our Lord's peace. Now is the time for the giving jar. Today's uh, giving jar goes to the Boys and Girls Club, which is right here in town.
Now we will have the reading of our scripture readings for this morning. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. A responsive reading is from Psalm 104, verses 1 through 5. Please respond with the bold. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. At this time, I'm going to invite the children to come forward and We've got a special treat for you this morning as Marshall Ryman is here to share a message with you. Hello. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Um, how how's your weekend been going so far? That's good. That's good. That's very good. All right. So um, I am going to talk to you guys a bit about creation this morning. Um, so from the start off, I ask you, uh, what have you guys created? Can you give me um, anything that you ever created? And it can be anything, anything. That's right, but what did, you, what did you create? Have you created anything ever? Oh, yeah? That's cool. Um, I see in, uh... Okay. <laughs> um, what, did you, what did you create? You created a song? Oh, that's really cool. That's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing how everybody, we can all create things um, with the help of God, of course. And um, so, and of course, I'm, I'm sure that you know this, but uh, that brings the question, uh, who created all of us? Can anybody answer me that? You can just say it. You can say it. That's right. That's right. I knew you knew. Um, yes, God, God created all of us uh, just the way we're supposed to be for a reason, and um, sometimes we don't know why, but uh, we will know eventually someday, and that is, that is an, that's a beautiful thing. Um, and uh, that also makes you think, um, what else has God created? Well, as I heard you say, everything, right? That's right. That's everything. Everything God has ever created. Um, can you tell me some of the beautiful things that you've seen? All of you that, uh, and you can raise your hands and I'll call on you, um, that you've seen that God's created. So like, what have you seen that's very uh, amazing and beautiful? He made animals, that's right. And what, what have you seen that's amazing and beautiful that God created? Humans, that's right. It can be pretty amazing sometimes. Animals, yep. The earth, that's an amazing thing too. Yes, um, so that's, that's an amazing thing is just 
uh, is just being able to create things and thinking that, just remember that every time you've ever created something that you were also created in, in the same way, um, out of the dust of the earth, like dirt, you know, um, which is amazing. And uh, I'm going to um, look at my prayer that I have for you guys here, that I got. Oh, and I actually also wanted to share something else that I've ever seen. Um, something that's really amazing for me to see that I've seen before is um, when uh, my baby lambs are born in, this, in the winter time, when it's really cold, because the, the, mama, the mama sheep always have their babies when it's really, really cold out, um, because that they're funny like that. And it's always amazing to see the baby sheep when they're really, really small. And, uh, and helpless, and their mamas, uh, they clean them and help them, and it's really beautiful. And that's an amazing thing that I've seen uh, that God do, and I think that's amazing. So uh, we're going to, let's say a prayer. So um, please bow your heads. Let's see. All right. God, you can repeat after me, actually. God, thank you for creating me. Thank you for my family and friends. And thank you for creating the world. And thank you for creating the world. The moon and stars. The moon and stars. Help me, help me to always love you. Love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you all. And let's, uh, let's sing our song. Jesus, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the... Now, thank you, Marshall, for sharing that. It's part of his confirmation project. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you brought your books? Yeah, some of you have. Uh, some, uh, who has yet to pick up their books? <laughs> if you haven't picked up your books... They're on the racks back there. If you do not find your name on something, because uh, I mean, we have little bookmarks that look, well, a lot like that, that are in each one that has, should have your family name on it. If you do not find that, just, uh, you can talk to me. Uh, Jalora, you know where the books are at as well. Uh, and uh, we have extras. We will have a book for you. If you uh, are a guest among us this morning, and you want to follow along, we are going to, we're doing a 30-plus week study going through the narrative portions of the Bible. If you want to be a part of this, we will get you a book. Uh, and so it's very, very important that, you, that you, we all have a book, and, and uh, uh, I, I would like for you to bring it every Sunday. Uh, and I know for Lutherans that's a little bit different, difficult because we, we're not accustomed to bringing our books with <laughs> So, uh, but uh, this is just a marvelous time. And we are going to begin, there again, at our alpha point over here. You can see the 31 weeks, uh, all, the 30 weeks uh, all around the, the room here. We're beginning at our alpha point. We're going to start at the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, and if you've, uh, I, I know that when I was uh, a little kid that, you know, I grew up in the, in the southeast Minnesota where there was, it was the land of little creeks and streams. And part of the fun of being a kid is to, is to always be looking upstream because you, I always wondered, well, where does this come from? You know, where does it start? And that's uh, where we're starting this morning, where it all begins. Genesis 1 Chapter, uh, uh, beginning with verse 1. And, uh, and you find that in these very first bits of Genesis, 
you know, we all carry hopes and dreams uh, with us, and, and, uh, and many times the sources of our frustrations when life doesn't go right, you just have this feeling that it could be better. Well, where does that come from? And what you're going to discover is that God's intentions from the very begin, beginning are written on your heart. And that is why it is so critical for us to drink in these first chapters of Genesis. So I'm going to ask that you turn to page, well, actually page one in your storybook if you have them. If you want to take a, follow along in your Bibles, you can just take, turn to Genesis chapter one and verse one. And there is, and, and we read there, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we're going to stop right there, because already, in that short sentence, you've learned a lot. Because this story takes you back from before time, right? That there was a moment in history where it all started. And in the beginning, God, right away in this story, you're meeting someone. Now, a number of you, did you pick up a study guide or kind of a sermon outline at the door here? If you picked up one of those, you can start filling in your blanks. We find out that the main character in the story is God. And, and God is bringing us into this story. This is God's story, as if God himself were telling it. And we learned some key things about uh, who God is. That number one, God is preexistent. That God was there before time ever was. In fact, he is not bound by time as we experience it. We also learned that God is very creative. He brings into existence things that never, ever have been. He forms these things, and then that takes a level of power and authority that none of us can imagine. I mean, how many of you have ever gone out to see something big like the Grand Canyon? Or you've traveled out? Yes, I I had the the. Uh, well, I, uh, I, had, I spent some time over in Zimbabwe doing some work, and I went to go see Victoria Falls, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, it is amazing when the thunder of that water just it literally penetrates your whole being, and you just got to say, wow, there is nothing like it in the, in the world. And you realize that this all takes a level of power and authority that you and I have a hard time imagining but it's there. We also learn that God has a plan. That this is no, nothing that's going to be happening here is random. God's not scratching his head think, thinking, well, what should I do next? God has a reason for everything that God does. And the amazing thing is that God speaks it out. Let there be light, and guess what happens? There was light. It's called the performative word of God. I, I mean, I would like to have that authority, just to live for, for, especially for the domestic things around the house, you know, kind of like, room be cleaned, Whew. dinner be made, wah, <laughs> dishes be washed, oh, no, it's, it's amazing. God has that authority, and you know what, we'll get into that in a little bit, you and I also do carry a little bit of that with us as well. But just look at the thoughtfulness of God when we, when we look at the days of creation. The first three days, God creates all of the spaces. We've got the heavens, we've got uh, water and sky, and we've got land, and of course, in the next three days, God populates those spaces. He puts things in them, and everything is filled. The sun, the moon, the stars, the fish and the birds, the animals all come into being. And you see the thoughtfulness that in, in the structure. And you see the order. It is absolutely amazing. And we get an extra dose of God's thoughtfulness as attention is centered on our little planet. 
planet Earth. And as you read in the a few sentences down, now the Earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. You know, and God shapes this, well, brought into being this dark, formless glob of matter and shapes it, uh, shapes the earth in a very particular way. And you see this thoughtfulness as you take a deep look at everything. Uh, you look into space, there on the, on the right side of the screen, you see, the, I think it's the California Nebula. It's one of the, one of the uh, uh, amazing uh, sights in, it, when you look into outer space. So when you take a look at the huge things like that, you see that amazing nature of God's uh, handiwork. And also when you take a look at the very tiny things, things that we can't see with our human eye, you see that same amount of detail. And on the left, that is the suction cup on the foot of a water beetle. So, and you just take a look at all of the different shapes and, and appendages that come off of that. It is amazing that we see in God's design tremendous complexity uh, and amazing thoughtfulness. Yeah, and on your study guide, you, uh, note that from, ev from the very, very beginning, we see order, we see beauty, and we see miracles. It is truly miraculous, the level of complexity that we have. And may God help us never to see it as anything less. And of course, we're not done. When you flip the page, on page 2, near the bottom, this is Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. That's, a, that's exactly at the, it's at the very bottom paragraph here. On your study guide, we learned, we learned something about community. And I'm going to take this apart a bit as, we, as, as I share it with you. We read, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. And you can underline, in our image, on there. And we're going to take that little, little phrase up, apart. First of all, make mankind in our so who's the hour here? Who is the hour? And here in Genesis, we learn that God in, in God's self is a community of being. Um, that um, this is the, the, what we consider as Christians as the, as the first experience of the Trinitarian nature of God. That God is one being in three expressions, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is a community of being in God's self. And there, of course, is more because God extends community as He creates human beings, as He forms you. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. And unlike anything else in all of God's creation, God makes human beings to reflect our Creator, and you are the gem of God's creation. As God is a community be of being in God's self, so God has created us to be a community of, of beings. So, that you are the object of God's affection as well. You are created in order that God might love you, that you are an extension of God's uh, uh, sense of being uh, and it, that is absolutely am amazing. And I would venture to guess that you probably maybe don't, re don't think about that very often. That God has made you that in order that God might love you. And we need to remind each other of that often. God loves you. You are God's gem. And of course, we're not finished with community yet. We turn to page four, and there, the second paragraph down, it's Genesis 2.18, where the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Now, everything up to this point has been good, but this is the first time we hear of something not being good. 
It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And the man, when he took a look at what God had done, was absolutely stunned as the woman was brought to him. And, and again, let's take a closer look at this. Uh, the woman is called a suitable helper. Uh, and women, please take note of this. Uh, the word for suitable helper is the Hebrew word azer. And, you know, let's just say that together. Azer. Azer. All right. And, and you are the azer. And if you're married, you can say, well, I'm the azer, your husband is the geezer, or something like that to help you remember. Yeah. But azer is a lot like the term, you know, like easy, uh, to ease, or I, you know, I'm just trying to draw out something to help you remember that. Do you realize that this is the only time this word azer is, is connected to a human being? It's used 20 plus times, or I should say nearly 20 times. Let me not get too carried away here. It's used nearly 20 other times in the Old Testament at every point other than this. It, that word is used for God. God being the helper. Uh, God being the supporter and things of that nature. But what we see here is God creating uh, a helper suitable to the man that was like God walking alongside him. And that is absolutely amazing, thoughtful, powerful. And, yeah. And she came also as an equal partner to the man. Uh, that was God's original intention, is that they walk side by side. Sin will soon mess with that intention. And what that, and, and getting back to that intention, you'll have to, you know, just, just think about what that original intention might look like when we talk about work and, and laundry and cooking in your household. Um, and uh, just amazing stuff. But here is God's original intention right here. It's the community of the human family. One man, one woman, children. This is God's design. And this is still, and, and right now in our present day, this is still the most stable human unit on the planet. You have an intact family, husband, wife, children, and you've got a unit that can withstand almost anything. The most, by far the most resilient human unit. And if you want to solve this world's most critical social problems, of which are many, there are many, encourage the building of solid families. Encourage the building of solid families and then watch the miracle of stability take place. It's amazing. And God takes a look at this picture one more time and he just doesn't say that this is good. He says this is very good. Very good. And of course, God's a part of this picture and God never wanted to be out of this picture from the very beginning. You know, God chose, or loved to do things like walking in the garden in the cool of, of the day as the Bible uh, explains it. God uh, longed to be walking side by side with us. That God wanted a relationship. But God honored his image in us. Which means he didn't force relationship upon us. And this is so important. Again, we're reading all of this in the very first, chapter, very first chapters of Genesis. Now we encounter what we see as, the, as, as the, the, the roots of the concept of what the philosophers would call the sovereignty of the human being. The sovereignty of the human being. And if you study the age-old institution of forced labor, otherwise known as slavery, here is where the argument against such institutions begins. That God created us with the authority to freely make choices. And that is at the core of human dignity. And from, from this springs the right to self-determination and the right to vote for that matter. And we're given authority to choose even if painfully it was against the one who created us in the first place. 
And for Adam and Eve, the choice came in the form of two trees. Now I'm going to take, have you take a look at that first icon. There you got the hand reaching up for the fruit of that branch of the tree right over there. And that was the choice that they had. The one choice, that, the choice that God wanted them to make was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I should say, well, tree, the tree of life. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to jump too quick here. The tree that God wanted them to choose was the tree of life. It is interesting that you see the, the tree of life first here in Genesis. You know where you're going to see the tree of life next? It's in Revelation, the last book of the Bible. You will see that that tree is still there. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the tree of life. The tree of life, of course, gave life. Gave life. And the, next, the, uh, the other tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that tree brought trouble and death. The reason that it brings trouble and death because only God has the capacity to, tear, to, to, to distinguish between the two, between good and evil. Because in our day and age, in our experience, good and evil are so, so many times so intertwined that we can't tear them apart. Just one illustration, remember, uh, this, is, this, is, this, this was probably 30 years ago. Uh, in, uh, uh, over Union Carbide had a battery plant. Uh, and... Um, that battery plant, of course, we all use batteries. My batteries went dead this morning uh, and uh, needed some new ones. We use batteries and everything. But they had a horrible accident. And we, and we would all say that batteries are good, right? But batteries also have some nasty things in them. And they had a, a horrible accident and uh, a number of people were killed. But that's the nature of these things. Nothing is purely good uh, in our experience. They all have unintended consequences. Um, so, and, and that is the point here, is that we human beings, we can't tear them apart completely. Only God can do that. As we move on, see, persuaded, they were, Adam and Eve were persuaded to believe the lie that God did not have their best interest at heart. And they ate of the tree that God warned them not to eat the tree of the knowledge between good and evil. And they began to feel some of the things that they had never felt before. They felt shame, they felt guilt, and they felt fear. And death was not far behind. And what did they do? They hid. They hid from God, and they will soon start hiding from each other. Now, that's the interesting thing about our culture is that uh, uh, in many ways, we're almost encouraged to bear, one, to bear ourselves to each other physically, but emotionally, forget it. I'm not going to tell you who I am. And that, uh, and that is just an, a, a horrible thing, uh, that we can't bear ourselves to each other emotionally, spiritually. And that is the most key part of human connection. Um, they went and hid, but God found them. God found them. You turn to the bottom of page 6 in your book. And uh, down to the bottom paragraph again, you'll see this line and underline this, that the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and, and his wife and clothed them. Now that is a line that you might just skim over uh, and fairly easily. But what I want you to recognize is, is this, that Adam and Eve tried to fix this on their own tried to fix their situation by themselves, by clothing themselves with a bunch of fig leaves. But God says, no, you can't fix this. This is beyond you. I need to cover you. And so God himself covered their sin, but blood had to be shed. And now we start to experience the real deep nature of sin, that sin brings death to everything it touches. That is why God has a zero tolerance for sin. That's part of your study guide. And sometimes we think that we, uh, we, we kind of let that slip away. 
We think that we, if we, uh, you know, uh, uh, work things out on our own, we should be good. Uh, and, but these things have unintended consequences. And Adam's, Adam and Eve's life, they were never the same after that. They were thrown out of the garden and this inclination towards rebellion and disobedience becomes part of our DNA, tempting us to trample on and destroy everything that is sacred and precious. And this story comes to a head when we see it in the story of Cain and Abel, a little bit further on in your book. Sin took over as Cain murdered his brother. Now, I don't think you could paint a more vivid illustration of how we lean towards violence when sin is involved and how our actions affect so many people, including God. And right after this, we read this really hard thing, and it's, a, it's on the top of page 8 in your books. Now, on the top of page 8, we read these words. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and how every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. Now, this is a hard turn just heart-wrenching, and there are many more to come on this ride, but in this situation, there was a human being receptive to God's heart, and his name was Noah. And God made a covenant with Noah never to destroy all of humanity in a flood. Now, here's a time when we want to, I want you to take, check out various things in our building. Now, right over here in the back corner, we have the creation window. You have, uh, uh, you've got the earth and all kinds of heavenly bodies floating around in that stained glass right below our, our uh, first chapter icon. But there's also a window dedicated to the memory of Noah and that story. You'll have to look around in the sanctuary for a bit. And I'm going to tell you that I'm sorry you folks on this side and over can't see it. <laughs> you got to look up. But you'll have to take a peek when you, when you exit the building. It's a beautiful window. This is a... Uh, we, we often classify this as a kid's story, but it's, there's so much here for us as adults. It's much more deeply an adult story uh, that God makes a covenant with, with Noah, and as a reminder of that covenant, he put a rainbow in the sky. And I just want you to remember that next time you see a rainbow, that God is deeply committed to you. And that's, head, uh, that's pointing us towards somewhere. See, that's a lot of ground to cover here in the, in the first chapters of Genesis. So, what do you glean from all of this? I want you to glean this from it, that God is sticking it out with you and I through thick and thin and is totally committed to you that you are God's gem. He will not let you go. That God uh, clothing Adam and Eve and placing the rainbow in the sky for Noah and the rest of us, they're the, it's the first of a number of God's mighty acts to reach we lost human beings. And I'll just say this, a human being that is not attached is a dangerous human being. God has meant you to be connected with him. Meant to be, you're meant to be connected in community, not to be off on your own. Uh, you're, you're meant to be connected to family. And of course, you know where this story is headed as God makes every, uh, every step along the way, carefully planning this out uh, to to bring us to the point of the climax of this story. And the reminder of that, of course, is this massive cross we have in front of our sanctuary. And you'll know the deep importance of this as you pull all of these stories together. So what are the key takeaways here this morning? 
Number one, God's desire is for relationship. His heart is for you. Secondly, you are made in God's image. Your fulfillment comes personally for you as you reflect the character of the one who made you. And here are some action steps as well uh, for you to think about and digest as you uh, leave this place and as you head on to the next chapter. Number one, just think about your image. I want you to think about your image. You and I are created in the image of God. Reflect what that means. Think about, uh, about marriage and family. Think about community. You were made to give people a glimpse of God. They see God's heart as you live out what you know to be true, as God is the truth. Reflect God's character. Secondly, your words. God spoke creation into being. Your words carry some of that same power. We create what our words reflect. So be careful how you use your words. And third, your choices. Think about the choices that you're making. If you're making choices that do not honor God's heart, well, stop it. And if you can't stop it, get help. Get help. Take steps towards life and not death. Think about your choices. And finally, pray. Pray that we would all be open for all that God has for us in this amazing season of reading through the Scriptures together. And let us all keep and live the faith. Amen. Would you please rise? Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, you are the one who put every star and planet in place. And yet you honor us. Open our hearts to your spirit as we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, open our understanding to what it means to be made in your image. You have placed your character in us. You have given us power to our words that we speak and have given to us the dignity to make choices. Our relationships that we have with each other reflect the relationship that you have within yourself. And you have placed so much value on us. We lift to you those who need to know that they are worthy of that kind of dignity and worthy of love. Help us to lift them up. We lift to you every marriage relationship. Ignite in our married couples the type of passion you feel for us. May we raise our children well. And we lift to you our community as well. Empower us all to work for the common good. And may we reflect you well in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, with your help, we are able to take care of each other. Grant that all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit may be renewed by your healing presence. And we pray especially today for Taylor Melby and Elijah Habeck, Jim Larson, Scott McGarry, Roy Scogan, Tina Francis, Leland Appleyard, Matt Grovestein, Pat Olson, Joyce Witt, Sherilyn Mosley, Carolee Lindenberg, Donna Trigested, and Bev Balliot. We also join with family and friends as they pray for Peggy and Betty and Brett and Sarah and Don and Alyssa and all of those that we name in our hearts at this time. May all of these in need and also those who care for them remain confident that you remember your children always. Lord, in your, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our creator, we place into your care all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Because you are one with us, O Christ, make us one with you as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the, the communion helpers to please come forward at this time. can begin coming forward from the outside wings up the middle.
Would you please rise if you're able? Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and grant you His peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we dismiss, just a few announcements. First of all, today we have begun the story. So all of your small groups, everything, and if you haven't signed up for a small group or a, a class, you got the heritage room packed down there. I know we're going to have to see if we can bring a few more seats in there. That was good. Uh, uh, but it all begins today. So we have a small groups meeting beginning tomorrow as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. Secondly, this coming uh, Friday and Saturday, and of course the, this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, ha is, uh, we have the Cran Fest up in Warrens. <laughs> and I have an opportunity for you, especially for Saturday. If you love meeting people from all over the place, and you, and you would rather drive around Cran Fest than walk it, I've got a job for you. And uh, we really need people still for Saturday. Um, and uh, uh, so look at the schedule uh, there. Uh, what this entails is just leading the commercial buses to their proper parking spaces. Uh, and then uh, secondly, just being courte courte uh, courtesy people to uh, transport people around uh, during the off times. And so it's a, it, it, it's a lot of fun. So... Sign up. Sign up. Okay. Oh, yes. And Jalora is going to bring up something here. I was really good the first service. I actually reminded people of that. The red pads in your pews, we need you to sign in there. It's hel it helps us maintain contact, uh, and uh, it, uh, it, it helps us to extend a little hospitality towards you as well. And also, for those of you who are members here, this is how we determine whether you are eligible to vote or not. So, so please, please, please sign in. Sign in. Thank you. Any other announcements? Hmm? Oh, yes. Family Promise. This is very late. It's, this is as of yesterday. They have taken a family in uh, to the program. We're up beginning next weekend, starting Sunday. We're up. Uh, and so we need all kinds of people. It, is, it should be a very easy assignment. It's a, it's a husband and, and wife 
who are expecting but are need a, need a little help getting their feet underneath of them a little bit. So it should be an easy assignment as far as that is concerned. So please take a look at that board and, and uh, give as, as you can. So very good. Any other announcements? Yes, Annette. Yes, Sunrise VDC, uh, yeah, thir October 13th to 16th, it is a wonderful renewal weekend. We also have another one with Northern Light coming up the first, week, uh, first weekend in November. So take a look at those two weekends. It's a wonderful renewal week, weekend. Uh, so, and you, you can have time away from home, all expenses paid, it's wonderful. Any other announcements? All right, you are made in God's image. May you reflect him well in all that you do. May you go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Thanks.